What's up, Brozones? Welcome to the Ozone and welcome to another FNAF video. I am super, super excited for this one. Yesterday, we got the cover for book number five in Tales from the Pizzaplex called The Bobby Dots Conclusion. That is such a weird name. This is such a weird cover and the description gets even more wild. So today I'm going to be going through everything that you kind of need to know about the Bobby Dots conclusion before getting into it. Obviously this is released before even Somnophobia is released so uh, information will probably be updated uh, a, a lot longer in the future but uh, I don't know what I'm talking about. Just let's get into this. So I think we should start with the description. Uh, <laughs> So, we have, would you ever cut corners to get what you want, outsourcing their storytelling to artificial intelligence comes with unintended results for the executives of the Fazbear Entertainment Board of Directors. Huh? This story is going to be mind-blowing. We are seeing the higher-ups in Fazbear Entertainment, we're seeing what they're doing. Are they going to hire Vanessa in this story? That would be very cool to see because we know that Vanessa was hired from someone higher up. We don't really know who it was. Vanessa obviously didn't have any prior qualifications to her security guard role. So why was she hired in the first place? It could have been a Vanny takeover or somehow glitch trap infecting the higher ups or something. But I think that this story could be absolutely mind blowing. I have no idea what the title is going to be, uh, and I have no idea if this is going to be lore significant, but uh, it seems like most of the stories in Tales from the Pizza Plex are actually in the game's timeline, so that is something big to note when reading these stories and thinking about the descriptions as well, how they exactly tie into the games. I have no predictions for where this story is going to go. Seriously, it's just kind of mind-blowing that we're going to see the the executives of the board of directors. That is insane to me. It's really cool that we've got this story coming up uh, and the fifth book is already looking amazing. So the second story we also don't have a title for but this is about, uh, well okay, this is Tony's search for the player behind the impossibly high scores of the Pizzaplex Fazcade leads him down a rabbit hole with no way out. Hmm. Okay, first things first. I did just put together in my head it says it leads him down a rabbit hole with no way out. So, I think, actually, uh, like, a lot of the descriptions for some of these books have funny foreshadowing. So, for example, in The Flesh, we all know what happens in that story, pregnancy. And in the description for that story, it says that Matt will birth the consequences. In Pizza Kit, where Peyton eats Marley alive, basically, as a pizza form, uh, the description for that story says that something is eat something else is eating her up or something. I can't quite remember. But you get what I mean. Like, they're using funny kind of, like, plays on words in order to convey a meaning of what the story will entail while also foreshadowing the later events of the story. It's really clever. And I have a feeling that leading him down a rabbit hole is going to be quite literal. You know, that is a very Alice in Wonderland kind of... Um, cliche kind of metaphor thing but uh, I do think that that might happen knowing that we do have a lot of uh, a lot of rabbits in the series <laughs> especially glitch trap I would say glitch trap could be very prevalent in this story it is about the pizza flex pizza plex faz cage so it's going to be very much about technology and the other thing that I will say that you're all waiting for me to say is that this could in fact be a Gregory story because Gregory is the child that holds the high scores throughout Security Breach, okay? Interestingly, the only arcade machine that doesn't have Gregory as a high score is Balloon Boy, Balloon Boy's Air Adventure. Is that what it's called or was that the FNAF 3 version? I, again, I don't know. My memory is suffering today. Oh yeah, by the way, I am, I'm wearing a suit because first of all, it makes me look smart and intelligent and secondly, I have a job interview today. So that's fun. Uh, on to the last story. And this one is the most interesting for two different reasons. Uh, first of all, this is the story for the cover art. So this is the cover art, as you can see. It is... I'm Okay, I'll be completely honest. I actually don't like it as much as the other covers. This is like a first instance where I'm actually not too sure about the cover. 
I think it looks like it should look cool, but I don't really like it. I don't know. It might not just be my style or whatever. I just think all of the rest are really bright and colorful and lovely. And then you've got like this weird thing. Uh, speaking of which, what is this? Well, I believe it is a Bobby Dot Home Assistant, or at least a broken one. Let's read the um, the description. So, and Abe's journey to find the first generation animatronics causing problem for his Bobby Dot Home Assistants lead him to believe he should have never moved into his new apartment. So again, this is interesting for two reasons. The first reason is we've already had a story about Abe in Submechanophobia. Obviously, I don't know what happens in it yet, but we have a part two to a story. We have a sequel story, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I would actually say that it isn't going to be like prequel or sequel. I would say it's more like one story, but in two parts. It's gonna be like to be continued. Um, and that's why this, this book is called The Bobby Dots Conclusion, because the first one, the first story about Abe is about Bobby Dots and the second is the, the conclusion of that story. So we are getting a two-parter that is pretty insane. Is this story going to be lore relevant? I actually think it will be because just like the man in room 1280, this is the third story in the fifth book. That has a lot of meaning. It could even be the origin story of the burn trap endo, you know? This is, this is something that I'm trying to piece together right now, right? So the burn trap endo from the epilogues it's, it's burnt, except, except for the skull. The skull is nice and shiny and it looked more human, right? And this, this is definitely giving me those kind of vibes. It's giving me kind of scrap trap vibes as well. It's very interesting. I really want to see where the story goes. I will also point out that in my Discord server, Ghost has the theory that this is the fourth Charlie from the fourth closet. And that is interesting. They do look very, very alike. But again, I would like to know how that works. I will point out that this robot on the cover does have eyelashes. So that's something to point out. What would the connotations of that be though? If this was the fourth Charlie, like does that mean that the, the Charlie bots were in the games this entire time and we just didn't know? Just remember that the original trilogy is in a separate continuity, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the themes that we get in there can't be used in the game's timeline. It's kind of like drawing parallels again. So I'm not sure. I would love to hear what you guys think about all of this. I absolutely love the idea of all three of these stories and I think this is going to be a hefty book so make sure that you pick it up. Uh, it's coming out in 2023 so this is what FNAF 2023 looks like ladies and gentlemen. This is what FNAF 2023 looks like except for fire and a lot of burning and hell and stuff. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in another video. Goodbye.